The people and places in Arkansas have a vision for Arkansas. We have folk who are working very hard to get us to that ultimate vision of Arkansas being a place of prosperity and a place where families and communities thrive. The Jones Center is all about engaging um, the community uh, for the betterment of the community. It's a safe place to come. It's a quality facility. We take lots of pride in our facility because it was a gift that was left by Bernice Jones. And it's truly an amazing facility, what's all under our one 220,000 square foot roof. We have a junior Olympic sized swimming pool, the region's only ice arena, and we have a wonderful chapel auditorium. We hold lots of wonderful conferences and weddings. We have a complete educational side where people come here to maybe get their GED or they learn basic computer skills. They can come into our computer lab and apply for a job or talk to family members in another country. It was Bernice's wish that all are welcome who behave as ladies and gentlemen. And as you walk through all of our entrances, you see those inscribed words. She wanted the community, no matter what your race, ethnicity, or background, that everyone would come together and play and belong. This is our 24th year of existence and Forge is a membership organization. Uh, the investors are members and the borrowers are members. And one of the founding principles of Forge was that uh, we would be the link between the investors and the borrowers. We've had uh, the same investors for, in some cases, 24 years. We have people that have uh, $40 invested in Forge, and we have people that have $80,000 invested in Forge. We're similar to a credit union in some ways, but I think we're probably the only democratic lending institution in the state. Our borrowers feel that this is their organization, which has kept our loan loss rate very, very low. And the investors also feel this is their organization because they can participate on any level that they want to. Arkansas is a good place to start a business because you have a tradition of entrepreneurship here. You have hardworking people and I think you have a very diverse economy. Uh, mobile detailing service is a unique thing for Northwest Arkansas. You come to their home, their office, so if your car is out there getting worked on and you get off work, your car is clean. It hasn't inconvenienced your day at all. You know, we have right now approximately 350 customers with this one unit. So many people that had a part in this, you know, being one forge and just the support that we have from the community. And that's what it's all about. We needed to find some funding to help us get started just with our equipment, school equipment, curriculum, and things like that. So we did a lot of research and I was actually referred to Forge. We have worked with them very closely. They've been very helpful. They have given me a lot of referrals and business contacts and I went to Charlie and he referred me to a really great business person that helped me develop our business plan and get everything we needed to go so that we could secure our loan. almost everything positive that are coming out of our African-American male program, especially when you're starting to see African-American males uh, ascend to higher leadership positions on campus, the first thing they ask is, are you a member of the league? They're starting to ask our young ladies that, are you a member of the league? The league initiative was started with the one question, where are African-American men on Henderson's campus? From that one question led to data, nationally, the graduation rate was around 35%. Looking at that on Henderson's campus, it was 29% below the national average. If you call students, if you call our students, if you call young people what they are, it changes everything. 
we call them League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. So when we call them that, they believe in it. They invest in it. We invest in it. So it's, it's a new thing to see our guys walking around in ties and bow ties and dress shirts. It's a new thing where now when they go to class, they sit in the front of the class because they look better than everyone else in the class or they want everyone to see them. Before the semester is over, they're wanting to get their schedules done. So now we're starting to see that 29% begin to increase because we're retaining our students. At the end of the day, that is the business. <laughs> We're a retention program. They're the ones that are getting, you know, the A's and B's because they're being held to uh, kind of a higher standard. We were just down here burning up like in July, getting those bicycles, start buying new parts. The kids start claiming, this is my bicycle. This is what I'm going to do to it. This is the color I'm going to uh, paint it in. Just ownership. So from there, we told them that they would need to sell some of those bicycles so we can continue to have some revenue in and I wanted them to become entrepreneurs. Well, uh, some of the gentlemen from uh, our church, First Baptist, donated all the tools and the students had never used a Phillips screwdriver from a regular screwdriver. They didn't know about the crescent wrenches. And they take care of the tools. At the end of each session, we have the boxes labeled. And they, oh, no, 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 you can't put that in there. That, that, that's a Phillips screwdriver. It does not belong there. It belongs over here. And the flat screwdriver, they belong there. And the wire pliers and the crescent wrenches. You know, now they know all of that. And developing skills that they can be proud of. We didn't have a place that was really comfortable and well kept when classmates would come back to have a banquet or have a reception. But a gentleman this morning that was our principal at the time when we were in school said, you have made a dream come true. Well, we are extremely proud of it. But now to hear someone say that they've been waiting all of this time to have a community center, I was just trying to do something so I could turn students into people who want to pursue education and show them the opportunities with education. And that it's not the poorest man in the world that don't have a dime. It's the poorest man in the world that does not have a vision, does not have a dream, does not know where they are going. That's, you are really poor. <laughs> And I tell my students, you can't be that poor. So you have to have a dream, you have to have a vision, you have to know where you are going and, and your purpose in life. And that's what the community center is doing, we're sharing with them.